Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more History Matters, and this time, an interesting one, The Time the Dutch Ate Their Prime Minister, a short animated documentary. But before we dive in and my preliminary thoughts, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below, I would love it if you joined the Discord and followed me over at Twitch. Okay, Dutch, what the fuck, you ate your prime minister? I've heard of this? Don't know the specifics, I've heard of it. Somewhat. All, pretty much all I've heard is that they, a prime minister got eaten. Eaten. Was he enti entirely eaten in full? I don't know. He, I just know he got eaten. Honestly, they ate him. And, let's dive in. Historically speaking, prime ministers aren't food. Shit. But this little fact wasn't enough to stop those go-getting Dutch from chowing down on their own in 1672. Now, oh. this raises a pretty obvious... Okay, so we're going pretty, pretty far back. ...obvious question, why? Why yeah. did the Dutch eat their prime minister? How does someone go from being in a position of immense power to becoming food for an angry mob? Oh. So, a bit of background. In the mid-17th century, the young Dutch Republic was in a difficult situation. It was surrounded by hostile powers who were pretty keen to carve it up or at least permanently subjugate it. Dude. You see, the Dutch Republic was rich, incredibly huh? rich, yep. mostly due to its new monopoly on trade with Southeast Asia, which everybody else wanted. Having so many enemies meant the war was somewhat inevitable. So, the title of Prime Minister didn't exist back in 1653, and the formal head of the Dutch Republic was called the Stadtholder. Previously, this office had been held by the Princes of Orange and was essentially an elected monarchy. However, as of 1650, the office was left vacant after a quarrel between William II and officials from Holland. In the decades following this, the country was deeply divided between two political groups. The first group was the Statist, those who favoured a loose federation and less centralised power, and the second the second group were the Orangists, who wished for the return of a monarchical system under the House of Orange in a deeply centralised state. Without a stadtholder, the effective head of the country was the Grand Pensionary of Holland, the richest and most powerful of the United Provinces, and the man who held this position was Johan de Witt. De Witt was in many respects a moderate, whose primary interest was protecting the flow of trade, and thus he wanted to avoid war at all costs. As such, de Witt prioritised the creation of a strong navy to deter anyone from interrupting said trade. Now, this policy worked well initially. When England fought a war in 1665 to pry some Dutch trade away from it, the Dutch promptly and decisively crushed the English Navy. <laughs> After this, de Witt was at the height of his popularity and power, and so sought to use this to settle his dispute with the Orangists who were led by the young William of Orange. As such, he implemented a law which meant that Holland no longer recognised the office of Stadtholder, making it impossible for William to have control of the entire country should he rise to power. To put it mildly, this upset the Orangists, but there wasn't much they could do yet. Things went south in 1672 when King Louis XIV of France decided that the Dutch Republic's existence had gone on for a bit too long and so he invaded. As the French do. And course, things went course. poorly for the Dutch. Very poorly. So much so that 1672 is referred to as the Rampia, which directly translates to a year which in retrospect can safely be described as being pants. What? Huh? With the French army rampaging through the country, the Orangists demanded de Witt's head and made a failed attempt to assassinate him. He resigned the office of Grand Pensionary, but this wasn't enough since he could potentially return, and so the Orangists arrested de Witt's brother. When de Witt <laughs> went to visit him, he was ambushed and killed by a mob, and oh. said mob subsequently ate him and his brother. Not all of them, that would be uncouth, but they did cook and eat some of them. We know this from several sources who described it as- The brothers de Witt. The mob murdered them. They ate them. It was crazy, yo. It's actually being a fairly organised display of cannibalism, which is pretty rare. In the end, he was killed because the people of his country were in a state of raw panic, and the Dutch mob ate him because they hated him. Huh. He had kept their rightful monarch away from power, and so they sought to humiliate him in death. And in case you're wondering, the reaction to their deaths in the Netherlands was that it was justified, and the new stadtholder, William, quickly pardoned everyone. So, if you only take one thing away from this, when leaders mess things up royally by losing a war and alienating half of their own country, they move on to the list of things eligible. Things you can eat. Dodos. Sea rations. Cake. Want to be eaten. Something to remember if you ever want to go into politics. I hope you enjoyed this episode and... Uh, well, I certainly wouldn't want to eat Ronald Reagan. He's probably fucking poisoned. Ugh, it tastes awful.
the time the Dutch ate their... Okay, well, we got our answer. Um, not at all what I was expecting, but okay. That... I, I have no words. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.